It is not a good day to be Ubisoft. Currently over in France, they're having a big investor meeting where they're talking about how their current projects are performing, basically saying how much they're managing to make in profit, and also talking about their future projects, and pretty much every single thing they're talking about is extremely negative. It turns out that their last couple games pretty much flopped, and they've got some pretty interesting excuses as to why this may have happened. Today, I want to go through what's going on with things like Watch Dogs, what's going on with Ghost Recon Breakpoint and the mass of backlash it's received and why it looks like Ubisoft may be in some very deep trouble. Now as many of you know, Ubisoft is a company that's been trying to reinvent itself over the course of the last couple of years, uh, specifically over the course of the last three years, where They've said that now they don't want to try and create new franchises. Instead, they want to try and create more live services. Basically, instead of creating a bunch of games over and over again and having to come up with actually original ideas, their plan was to just try and come out with tons and tons of DLC and microtransactions. That way, one player would stick with one project for an entire year. And it turns out that this experiment has gone catastrophically bad. Now, I actually kind of remember something, which is there was this time where I was at a supermarket and there was this guy who just didn't want to get a grocery cart. He didn't want to get a hand basket and so instead what he was doing is he kept just picking up items one by one and adding them to his hands. Just trying to see how much he could possibly carry on his way to the cash register. But as he got more things and gets more items and tries to pick up another can of soup and a jar of salsa, well it became more precarious, it became more wobbly, and eventually he dropped it and made a huge mess. It exploded across the entire aisle and ended up really embarrassing him. Well, guess what? Today is the spilling day of Ubisoft. So basically what's going on is they've been having to come out and basically tell their investors, we screwed up. And as somebody who actually hates their last couple games because they are just such greedy messes, this is hilarious to watch. Now, in case you never watched my Ghost Recon Breakpoint review, it was a game that was interesting but extremely flawed, down to its fundamental levels. Basically, when you're playing the game, it has some really good controls and good to stuff like when you're trying to tactically take out a bunch of enemies, but the issue was that it was completely riddled with pay-to-win mechanics. You could actually purchase individual guns, money for inside the world, and even vehicles. So if you just were, like, stuck, you could just purchase a super-fast helicopter and zoom across the map. It was ridiculous. And what's interesting is this led to a very direct piece of feedback. A lot of people within the Ghost Recon community were basically telling Ubisoft to go F themselves and saying, we're not going to buy your game even though we love this franchise. And what's interesting is a lot of people say, how much does internet buzz matter? If people are saying they're going to boycott something, how much does this actually lead to a boycott? Well, looking at their sales numbers, it looks like everybody decided to avoid it. But what's interesting is, not only did people not buy it, Ubisoft seems to be completely baffled that nobody actually picked up their completely terrible mess. So what I want to do is, they gave a list of excuses for why this game didn't sell, and... They are so ridiculous. So what they did is they came up with three reasons why people aren't buying their live service games. Because keep in mind, there's actually been two major ones that were released this year. We got The Division 2 and Ghost Recon. Now, The Division 2 was actually pretty spectacular. I had a lot of fun with it. But I'll be honest, after I played the initial campaign and did some of the side quests, I just quit. I mean, I just don't really like the idea of live service games because after a while, I want to see that next adventure, that next story, that next world. Uh, maybe it's just the fact that I'm a little bit ADD, but I like to see what's coming next. But they actually think that the reason that everybody's quitting their games or not buying them is a little bit more stupid. Now, let me just read this. At this stage, we've identified three main reasons behind this underperformance. First, it's harder to generate interest for a sequel to a live multiplayer game when prior iterations benefit from years of optimization. Consequently, we need to make sure that there's more time between each of the iteration of live games. Now, this is a little bit true. I just think it's funny to think, like, their game sold badly, and now they're trying to be like, well, it's not that the game sucked, it's the fact that people loved the previous game so much. Ubisoft, you know that this isn't true. I'm somebody that loves a lot of stuff like, uh, so I enjoyed Final Fantasy XV a lot, 
And well, you know what? I actually played all the DLC of Final Fantasy XV. I got every trophy and every achievement in every single piece of the Final Fantasy XV DLC. And you know why I did that? Because I enjoyed the base game. It's because I was already emotionally invested in this universe. But if you guys are trying to say, well, maybe they didn't buy Division 2 because Division 1 already had so much good content. That is not at all the case. But moving on to second uh, number two, they said, uh, Second, our strategy of introducing gameplay innovations in our games has been very positive impact on our brands. However, to win over players, these innovations need to be perfectly implemented in order to offer an optimal experience. This has not yet been sufficiently the case with Ghost Recon Breakpoint. While the change of formula has been very well received by some players, with an average daily playtime per player of over three hours, it's also been strongly rejected by a significant portion of the community. Now let me just try and translate this corporate speak for you. They're basically saying their changes, aka the microtransactions, have been resoundingly rejected. Even the people who bought the game are actually turned off by it. To me, that is a very big deal because it's showing that as a whole, consumers are getting way more intelligent. People who are actually out here buying games watch YouTube videos and hopefully give them a like and subscribe. But more than that, people are actually constantly communicating information to each other. If you make a game that rips people off, they're going to go to work and tell their friends. They're going to text their dad, hey, don't buy this for Billy for Christmas because this is a straight up scam. Now let's look at number three on their list of the trifecta of excuses. Finally, Ghost Recon Breakpoint did not come in with enough differentiation factors which prevented the game's intrinsic qualities from standing out. I'm about to freaking, oh my, I'm so, I'm dying right here. Could you imagine? Oh my god, this is the stupidest thing I've ever freaking heard of my life. But basically they're saying, our other games were so great that we just didn't manage to make this great in a different way. Are you high? I mean, I hate to say that because Yves Guimau, the, the, the CEO of Ubisoft, actually does seem like he is a legitimate gamer. He wants to try and make great stuff, but the studios are churning out hot trash. This is so hysterical to be like, our previous games were good, and now the sequels just won't sell, and we don't know why. Let me tell you, Gimo, it's the freaking monetization method. People don't like badly built projects. People just want to find the biggest project for the lowest price to enjoy and then try and get their friends to play it. I mean, look at something like, this is going to be a weird analogy, but I feel like it's actually pretty applicable, which is, think about A Way Out. So this was actually a tiny indie game that had a very interesting twist to it, which basically was that in order to play the game, it was forced co-op. You could not play it by yourself. So because of it, you had to find a friend who either had the game or would come over to your house and play it with you. Now that actually basically means that in order to try and get a bunch of people to finish the experience, you're going to need to have more sales or more people just playing it with each other. It makes it a more social experience. And they also were smart to make the game a lot cheaper. It was $30 instead of $40 or $60. And what's funny is that it became a giant success because yes, it didn't have a million sales. Yes, it didn't manage to make a billion dollars. But instead, they set their project, they set their goals, they followed through on them. It was a co-op experience, it was fun, and it was damn memorable. It didn't have a bunch of microtransactions and DLC and insanity. It was just pull the trigger, there's the bullet. It's so funny to me the fact that they're trying to freak out and think that this is some sort of magical curse of what's happening at Ubisoft. But what's really crazy is that this is having some pretty big ramifications now on 2020. So they've just actually decided to pull up their entire timeline for the next year and they've said, okay, delay everything. Thing. Everything that they're currently working on, Gods and Monsters, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and even freaking Watch Dogs Legions have now been pushed way further into 2020 in an effort to try and actually repair them. Yes, that's right. Essentially what they're saying here is that they realize that their games are now having a fundamental flaw to them. An Achilles heel, a part that's basically going to constantly undermine their projects. You can't just make a good sequel, you can't just make a great sequel, you need to make a new game. People are tired of every single freaking one of your projects just being identical, and there's no amount of polish 
or pristine marketing that's going to ever try and surpass that. Gamers are intelligent, and they're getting smarter every day. Your BS, your twists and turns, your fancy press releases are not going to be able to deceive people into buying a single loot crate ever again. Ubisoft, I hope you're actually learning your lesson from this, because right now you guys are definitely in some very hot water. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this random off-the-cuff rant. I'm actually working on like 15 videos right now, and I'm about to fly to California. Um, a couple hours after this video goes up, you're going to see, um, it's going to be top 10 um, uh, best horror gaming moments. That one's going up, and then I'm actually working on a Call of Duty review, and I'm trying to finish up my review for The Outer Worlds. So, this is going to be a busy weekend. I love you guys a bunch. Thank you for watching and give this video a like and all that. Uh, bye. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.